Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing chapter 11, which is essentially about the supply curve, going into the details about inputs and costs that a firm faces. So let's look at our, look at our production function. A production function is essentially a relationship between the quantity of inputs that the firm uses, these are your raw materials, land, labor, capital, etc., and the quantity of output that it ends up producing. So the firm remembers organizing these raw materials or factors of production like land, labor, capital. It uses some production method or technology on them and out comes your final output. So your final output could be let's say pizzas and we're using capital, labor, land, etc. for our production of these pizzas. So this is a generalized production function telling us that the output that the firm produces is a function of its inputs. In this simplified production function, we have only two inputs, capital and labor. If any one of these inputs is fixed, so you cannot change the amount of that particular input for now, we will refer to that as our fixed input. If the amount of the input can be varied, we will refer to that input as our variable input. Time frame that the firm is working in is now tied to the fact that whether inputs are variable or not. In microeconomics, the long run is defined as a time period in which all inputs can be varied. So you can vary your amount of labor, land, capital, all other raw materials, etc. Whereas if the firm is working in the short run, this is a time period in which at least one of these inputs is fixed. So we can assume for now that capital is our fixed input and with our two input production function, labor is our variable input. So if capital or at least one of them is fixed, we are in the short run. If both are variable, then we are working in the long run. In the short run production function, your output now just increases because of the amount of variable input employed. So if I'm assuming labor to be my variable input, as labor increases, I'll be able to produce more. As I reduce the number of workers employed, output will also gradually reduce. So output essentially is dependent upon just our variable input because remember now we are working with some fixed amount of capital. That capital is not changing. Since we are only working with the variable input in the short run, let's look at the relationship between output produced and the quantity of a variable input or labor to be specific defined by three main concepts. So the first one is our total product, TP, marginal product, and lastly, average product, or to be specific, average product of labor. Total product gives us the relationship between total output produced in a given time period as we increase or decrease our variable input. So it's a function of our variable input. Next, we have marginal product of our variable input or marginal product of labor. This is looking at the change in total product or the increase in total product because of one additional unit of labor hired or labor employed. So as we increase our variable input, by how much does total product change? That is captured by your marginal product of the variable input. And lastly, we have average product. Average product of labor is simply the per unit output produced by each worker. So total product, divided by number of workers hired or employed. So this is a measure of your average productivity of workers. On average, how much is output produced by each worker? Let's look at an example over here. In this example, the firm is producing sweaters in any given day and its variable input is workers. So you can see it's hiring workers from all the way zero to five. And as it increases its variable input or workers, its total product or output produced by the firm in the form of sweaters also increases. There are certain things that you should be noting over here. First of all, as your variable input increases, total product increases. Secondly, note that your marginal product, which is looking at the specific productivity of that specific worker or the change in total because of one additional worker that initially increases and then it starts to decrease. So it's initially increasing and then decreasing. So that's our MPL. And lastly, we have average product of labor. In this particular example, average product starts from four, goes up to five, and then it's also decreasing. So we have a similar pattern in our average product of labor. So let's look at our total product curve. Note the slope of the total product curve. 
it initially rises very fast so it's very rises very steeply so the curve is becoming steeper and after point c or after the second worker it starts to increase but at a decreasing rate so the slope is initially becoming higher and then the slope starts to decrease what's the slope of a curve slope of a curve is rise over run so in our case that would be the change in total product divided by change in labor and as we just discussed this is simply the marginal product of our variable input so the slope of total product is your marginal product and we're observing over here initially marginal product is rising and eventually marginal product of labor or our variable input is falling let's now look at the specifics when we hired the first worker we see total output increasing by four units when we had the second worker the second worker produces six additional units of output or six additional sweaters so total output increases to 10. when we had the third worker total output increases to 13 indicating that the third worker only introduced three additional sweaters to our total production so three six and four slope of tp is simply looking at the increase in total output because of one additional worker hired or the specific productivity of that particular worker hired let's draw this marginal product curve on a separate diagram so if i was to draw marginal product of labor this is a function of again our variable input so we have labor on the x-axis and marginal product of labor on the y-axis initially we can see as we are hiring the first worker marginal product is increasing reaches a maximum and then after the second worker each additional worker is giving us less than the previous worker so your marginal product for curve starts to decrease so it is what we call a maximum function and this is simply reflecting the slope of our total product curve but now drawn out on a separate diagram the point at which your marginal product is maximum is called our point of diminishing marginal productivity. In our case, when the firm hires the second worker, marginal product is at its maximum possible. And that's our point of diminishing marginal productivity. After that, marginal product of each additional worker will be less than the previous one. This observation that we see marginal product decreasing is referred to as the law of diminishing returns. In the short run, when you're working with a fixed amount of input, whether that's capital or the amount of land that you're working with, if you are working with some fixed input, you will always see diminishing returns to your variable input eventually. Why does it increase initially? Your marginal product initially increases because of division of labor and specialization. When you're tasking your different workers with specific tasks, distributing that division of labor according to their comparative advantage. Everybody is doing what they're relatively good at. The firm experiences you know, gains from specialization. Overall total product starts to increase at a rapid rate or it starts to increase steeply indicated in the slope of the total product curve as it initially rises very sharply however when diminishing returns kick in cause your workers are now working with some fixed amount of capital or fixed amount of land they have less space to work in or less capital to work with and therefore we see diminishing returns kicking in average product of labor remember is simply a measure of our average productivity total output divided by the number of workers employed marginal and average are not the same note marginal looks at the specific productivity of the nth worker eighth worker tenth worker second worker whereas average productivity looks at the average output produced by your firm given some number of inputs hired so do not confuse the two they are completely different concepts in the second example we have the example of a wheat farm so a small farm producing wheat let's assume we are working with some fixed amount of land so land is your fixed input and you can vary your number of workers hired so again labor is a variable input and output or total product is a function of our variable input in this particular case your total product curve has a decreasing slope so this firm never experienced specialization so they never had total product increasing at an increasing rate in this case as soon as they have started hiring the first and the second and the third work or so on the firm immediately experiences diminishing returns to the variable input indicated by the slope slope is decreasing if we were to draw this marginal product of labor separately as we have done in the second panel you can see marginal product of labor is diminishing so as we are hiring more and work more workers on this farm each additional worker is giving us less output than the previous one so we have diminishing returns to our variable input
Let's now increase our fixed input. In this case, let's now increase the amount of land that we're working with. With more land, each worker can produce more than before. So we'll see our total product curve shifting up from TP1 to TP2. Note that with more land, each worker can produce more. So the marginal product of each worker has gone up. And we see an upward shift in our marginal product curve as well. So note when we are working with higher amount of our fixed input, it not only pushes your total product curve up, but it also increases increases the productivity of our each individual worker. So shifting our marginal product curve up as well. The firm is still experiencing diminishing returns to the variable input. So the new marginal product curve is still downward sloping. Another thing to note over here is that if we were to draw the average product and marginal product curve on the same diagram for a firm that initially experiences gains from specialization, and then diminishing returns, we'll see that marginal product, which is the green curve over here, always intersects the average product of your variable input, in our case APL, always at the APL's maximum point. So this point A is where average product is at its maximum. Think about this fact. Why does marginal always intersect the average from above at averages maximum point. We can use a simple example to understand this phenomena. Let's assume your average GPA currently is 3.0 and this semester your GPA is 3.5. If the performance in this particular semester is higher than your current average, it will push your average up. The new average GPA will be now higher than 3.0. If your performance this semester is lower than your current average, so let's assume it's 2.7, it will push your average down. So average is in influenced by what's happening in your marginal time period or in this case what's the difference between the average performance of workers and what's the contribution of that specific worker that has been added to the workforce. Likewise, if your average GPA is the same as what you get in this particular semester, so they are both the same, in this case you'll note that there's no difference in your new average. The new average will remain the same. Likewise, we can now apply this to what's the average performance of workers and what's the performance of the newly hired worker. If note that the marginal product of the labor hired is higher than the current average, it will push the average up. As long as the green curve, which is our marginal product, is higher than the average product, regardless of the fact whether the firm is experiencing uh, gains from specialization or whether diminishing returns have kicked in, that doesn't matter. The value matters. As long as the marginal product of the last worker hired is higher than the current average, it will push your average up. So average keeps on increasing. After point A, note that your marginal product of, of labor is lower than the current average. So if you hire a new worker and he is contrib contributing less to your total output than the current average, it will push the average down. So whenever marginal is below the average, it pushes the average down. When marginal is higher than the average, in this part before point A, it pushes the average up. What happens at point A? At point A, marginal and average are both exactly equal. So if average product of labor is a maximum function, that means there is no change in your average and it's indicating that average must be at its maximum point. So marginal, higher than the average, pushes the average up. Marginal, lower than the average, pushes the average down. Marginal, equal to the average. Average must be at its maximum point. It is now not changing. Our understanding of the total product, marginal product, and average product, and the shape of these curves will help us understand the short-run costs for the firm and the shape of our short-run cost curves.